This is Penny. She lives in a van with me, Morley, my wife, Eden, and her big little sister, Abby. Penny has cerebellar hypoplasia, which basically means that she moves like a cartoon character. <laughs> well, it really means that her cerebellum is slightly smaller than normal, which gives her a little trouble with balance and affects the way she moves. But it hasn't gotten in the way of her living a full life. She loves exploring the van, coming on hikes in her backpack, climbing on our shoulders like a parrot, and recently, we've started taking her on supervised walks around the van. But there's one problem. Penny can't get back into the van by herself. With her cerebellar hypoplasia, she climbs onto tall objects by clawing her way up, kind of like King Kong. She can jump right up, I've seen her do it and it surprised all of us, but her condition makes her think that she can't. This isn't a problem on soft objects like a couch, but the ledge of the van is a hard surface suspended about two feet off the ground, with nothing for Penny to sink her claws into. So when she wants to come inside, we need to carry her inside. I'd love to give Penny some more independence by designing something that allows her to get into the van by herself and have that solution be easily tucked away when it's not in use. All right, Penny, let's design you a ramp. The van is 21 inches above the ground. I think we want a ramp length of about 41 inches and about eight and a half inches wide will allow us to actually print this thing. All right, so, I mean, a piece of wood could make that ramp, but I want something that is collapsible. I want something that is textured so Penny can get her way up it. And I want something that is easy to deploy. So I think first step, let's make it textured. Boom, okay. So now we got a textured ramp. Definitely gonna need to split that into pieces to fit on the build plate. All right, now we just gotta do all the engineering. <laughs> I just had a brain blast. So instead, 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 <laughs> instead of building the ramp in four parts and having it fold together like an accordion, what if I built it in like 20 little parts so it could roll up and then roll out like a red carpet? I think it would store way easier in the van, look much cooler and just be a more fun design. Let's do it. All right, so we can delete most of this from the timeline. Boop, 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 go all the way back to just our basic ramp. So if we do links that are inch and a half long, yeah, one and a half, it's gonna roll up into like a giant cylinder. So we, we gotta make it smaller. Let's change that to, let's change link length to one. And since we use parameters, everything should update live. The only thing is that makes 40 lengths. That's gonna be a lot of 3D printing. It's all good. That's why we're doing this. The 3D printer's doing the work. Is this boring to watch? <laughs> oh yeah, that looks, there we go. That's doing a thing. <laughs> when I do 3D design, I like to get to a first prototype as fast as possible so I can iterate quickly and improve. The first prototype showed me that my hinges really needed to be bulked up and I needed to adjust the tolerances. I also added some alignment pins to hold the links more rigidly when it's folded out into the ramp. The second prototype was a lot better, but I noticed some weakness from the print orientation in the hinges to the point where they were actually breaking when I put too much force into the ramp. This was a tricky problem to solve, so I focused on designing the rest of the link with a grid pattern so Penny could climb up it with her claws before I realized a great simple solution. Since the weakness in the hinges were caused by the print orientation, I just sliced the hinges off of the rest of the link, oriented them 90 degrees on the print bed so that the layer lines are working with me instead of against me, and then just added some alignment pins so I could glue them on to the rest of the links. I think this will work well, so I set up a batch of five links. It's gonna take eight hours to print and I need 40 of them. So it's gonna be some jam-packed days of printing. 
Right as I started printing these pieces, we had to completely disassemble the van so that we could paint our cabinets and put up our walls. But fortunately, I could keep the 3D printer plugged in and print Penny's ramp while we worked on the van. However, this left Penny without her little cave and completely exposed to surprise attacks from Abby. No one likes to live in chaos, especially when you're a little wobbly cat in a big world. But thankfully, Happy and Polly, the sponsor for this video, sent some perfectly timed cat furniture so that Penny could still have some cozy nooks amidst the construction. Since we're camped out in the desert, Penny loves sunning herself on the wooden sunset cat couch, which has to be the most luxurious piece of pet furniture I've ever seen. I mean, just look at this absolute queen. When she wanted a bit more protection, she loves curling up in the mushroom cat house. Honestly, this thing looks so soft and cozy, I would happily take a nap in there if it was human-sized. They also sent this great sisal scratching pad, which will hopefully lure Penny away from destroying Eden's handmade cushions. It also has a string so we can hang it from the wall or the back of the seats. And perhaps the star of the show, the flower-shaped cat bed, has quickly become Penny's favorite. So much so that once we finish the renovations, we move the flower bed permanently into her nook. Check out the links in the description for all of these products or go to happyandpolly.com for more cat furniture and toys. Thanks again to Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. So after a week of printing, a kilogram and a half of filament and an hour of removing support material, we are finally ready to start putting this thing together. Just in case you were wondering, Penny is here to help with assembly. So first things first, I want to attach all of the hinges to the links. So it'll go together just like this. Hopefully my tolerances aren't too tight. Oh, it's close. <laughs> and we'll just use a bit of super glue or CA glue, not brand name, to reinforce the connections. All right, there's one. Now I just got to do that 39 more times. Penny's excited about her ramp. So you may have noticed these extra holes in the middle, one on either side. These are for magnets to give the link some extra rigidity. We can just use a bit of CA glue to glue those in place. Easy way to not mess up the polarity, I can put these two links together. Oh, perfect fit. And I can just let the magnet find the other one, put a bit of super glue in there. I can pull it off and just flip it so it's facing the right way. Ooh, that has some nice action. It feels really rigid. The question is, will it still feel rigid when there's 40 of them in a row? So uh, it's a little bendy. <laughs> they always told us in engineering that it's better for something to bend than to break, but um, <laughs> I don't think this is usable. It felt pretty rigid when it was just like this amount, but as soon as we added length, it just got progressively more and more bendy until uh, <laughs> this is what we're left with. The roll-up action is really cool. It's just, it's just a little too giant. <laughs> Actually, you know what, it kind of, whoops, it's also super heavy. <laughs> like this was a kilogram and a half of filament and like 80 magnets, but it kind of hangs really nicely. I mean, maybe I was thinking about this all wrong. Maybe instead of a ramp, we should be thinking more like a ladder because Penny really just needs something to get her back legs up because she can grab on right here. The complete failure of the roll-up design showed me that I had to go back to the drawing board. Not only was this thing way too flexible, but the hinges fell apart. It's too long. I realized I could do a much steeper slope. The grip 
also seemed wrong. I think the holes were too small and too widely spaced. It was way too bulky. I don't know why I thought this giant roll of links would store easily in the van. I think I got way too attached to this roll up idea early on in the design process and it just made for a bad product. In reality, that series of larger folding sections seemed like it would work way better and store in a smaller space. I completely redesigned the hinges. So instead of having them clip on, I did full barrel hinges. Again, 3D printing the barrels in a different orientation so that they were as strong as possible. And for the pin, I just used a dowel. Should be nice and strong. And to make this thing as rigid as possible, I also increased the thickness. The link design was about 0.4 inches and this one is 0.7 inches. I'm not gonna apologize for using inches with 3D printing. <laughs> The trickiest part with this was figuring out how to actually make it fold up since all of the hinges have to go in the same direction to get a nice rigid ramp. But I think the design that I figured out is super cool. We have these multiple folding sections and then this link on the end doesn't lock into place. It's so I can put it on the edge of the van and then I got this clamp here. So as you can see, I went with more of like a ladder design after seeing Penny try to get into the van, I think all she really needs is somewhere to get her back claws on. And if she can grab onto here, as long as this is strong enough, she should be able to get up. So let's go get that little rascal. I got Penny up from her nap. Got some pocket full of kibble right here. Penny, look, it's up here. Come on, Penny, I built you a whole ladder. That was very strategic, but I want you to go up. It's so hard training a cat. Look, up here. It's like she, <laughs> Penny, she just grabbed it with her paw. That was like, that was some human level dexterity. All right, Penny, I know you're used to going up here, but I built you this beautiful thing, literally a week of 3D printing. I just want you to look, if you move slight, look. See, oh, you ready? I'm gonna go up here. <laughs> I never thought that training a cat would be the most difficult part of this video. Animal, I have built you a tool. Use it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Penny, look. Look. Oh, yes. Come on, this way. You can do it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Right, you ready? It's right up there. Oh my gosh, is she gonna get into the van without the ramp right next to it? Penny, look. Please, just use the thing I made you. Wait, Eden, I have an idea. Drop kibbles down the ramp. They're literally right, right behind you. There's kibbles right behind you. There you go. Oh, she sees them. Yes, yes, there we go. We got paws up. Yeah. Oh, we're getting there. I feel like it's just a matter of time. Abby's sniffing around too. She's like, oh, I heard there were kibble around. I heard there was free food. Use the ramp. Oh, wow, she almost jumped all the way up. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god, I think so. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Has this ramp just <laughs> showed her that she can get in the van without it? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I'd love to get her to actually use it, but if she can just get into the van on her own, kind of a success. <laughs> Penny, I'm so proud of you. 3D printing solved my cat's disability. In a way that we didn't expect. <laughs> I mean, I would love to get a shot of you using this ramp, but if you really don't need it, I'm, I'm just so proud of you. 
No matter how much I tried to lure her up with kibble, Penny just did not care about the ramp. Now that she knows she can get into the van on her own, she has no interest in my human-made inventions. Which I guess is what you want with accessible infrastructure. I mean, I think I just inadvertently trained her to get into the van by herself. And as much as my ego wants to get a shot of her using the invention that I spent weeks on, I'm just proud of her for, uh, for growing and surprising me. And I don't think I need to force getting this shot. I think, I think this is a worthy ending. Ah, where, where is she? Let me go get her. If you would like to directly support this channel, you can gain exclusive access to behind the scenes content and my private Discord community by supporting this channel on Patreon. I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. And I'm so proud of this little kitty cat. <laughs>